everybody. Thanks for watching today's topic, rookie running backs for fantasy football circa 2019. And while I wouldn't try to palm myself off as a college football scout, it's really not my job, I still have developed some opinions because I've watched a lot of film on these incoming rookies, so I'll tell you what I think of them. First off, I hope it's self-evident that rookie running backs can really contribute for fantasy football. Let's take a look. In this decade, we've had six rookie running backs finish top five in standard scoring and plenty more finish top 10. We don't always nail the correct guys at the correct time because it's difficult to see through the hype and through the situational noise. And I can't claim that I'll have nothing but pearls of wisdom about the 2019 class, but let's at least talk about the likeliest candidates, discuss their strengths, discuss their weaknesses. Josh Jacobs, late of Alabama, drafted in the first round by the Raiders. Definitely my favorite running back prospect of 2019 by a pretty wide margin. He's a missile. He has that low center of gravity that makes him a hammer. I guess he's a missile and he's a hammer. But he also has rare acceleration when he's in that crouch. He can string together multiple hard cuts in a single run. Might not quite be a burner, not quite a long distance home run threat every time he touches the ball. But he is a tough punisher, and he seems like he has very good vision. No, I'm not comparing Josh Jacobs to the guy we saw on that previous full screen, Saquon Barkley. He was the no-brainer top rookie heading into 2018. He was someone I believe was a generational talent before he ever played an NFL snap. Jacobs is a good prospect. Not all world, and he doesn't come without question marks. In the tradition of Kenyon Drake at Alabama, why couldn't Jacobs earn anything close to a starting job in college? He had... 299 career college touches in three years, also known as 107 fewer than Derrick Henry had in his junior season alone. Last year, Jacobs was third among Alabama's running backs in carries, behind Damian Harris and Najee Harris. And trust me, I know from experience, if you can't beat out Harris's, you got question marks. And of course, the Raiders themselves, that offense is in transition. Antonio Brown, a new right tackle, Trent Brown, uh, questions on the interior of the offensive line. Doug Martin still in Oakland. Uh, I didn't think he looked washed last year, but Jacobs is better. He should at least spearhead a committee, and he should be the first rookie off the board in most drafts. Let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor on today's show. It's DraftKings. We love DraftKings. We talk about it all the time on the podcast. Often I'm playing against a lot of you in DraftKings. They're a lovely sponsor, and they've got a great promotion going on right now. If you click the link in the notes below me, to go over to DraftKings and start up a new account with a minimum deposit of $5, they will send you my Harris Football 2019 Player Profile Almanac that I keep talking about in all these videos for free. That is a $17 value that you get for starting an account at DraftKings and making an initial deposit. It's a pretty great deal. And the Almanac, I hope it's good. I hope you like it because I really worked hard on it. It's basically like three months of film watching. It's a PDF that you'll get delivered direct to your email and, uh, You'll see profiles of 240 players. It's over 200 pages, lots of snark, lots of film grades. I really thank DraftKings because it's a fun, creative way for you to get indoctrinated into playing DFS. DraftKings is great and also a way to get the almanac. Thanks so much, DraftKings. Getting back into it, next on my list is David Montgomery, third round pick of the Bears, who jettisoned Jordan Howard for what I think is a pretty clear upgrade. There's a solid consensus that Montgomery should be able to to handle the same power role that Howard occupied past few seasons in Chicago. Montgomery, strong pile mover, 222 pound, uh, forces his way through traffic. He was against Big 12 defenses, so not getting carried away, but that Iowa State film that we're looking at, it's full of really nice hits that he initiated. The thing that scouts are more divided on is, can Montgomery be more than that? Is he a dynamic runner, maybe a little bit of a pass catching in there too, or is he the thumping part of a platoon. If you get the 2019 Player Profile Almanac, you'll see my comp for Montgomery is Ryan Matthews, which I intend as a compliment. In today's NFL, I think it's probably better to be compared to Matthews than to Howard. Montgomery is not straight line fast, but I see enough shiftiness to feel optimistic. Uh, he's not super quick right at the handoff. If he gets a moment to sort of gather himself, he can string moves together. Now in the NFL, sometimes you don't get moments to gather yourself. Maybe actually, I think in college, Montgomery danced a little too much. Sometimes he ran like he thought he was quicker than he is, and that can get you in trouble for sure in the pros. 
I have a feeling part of Montgomery's indoctrination in the NFL is going to be coaches trying to tell him, like, be a little bit more like Jordan Howard at the line of scrimmage. Maybe after your physical, we can worry about putting together moves. The Bears have Tariq Cohen, and he's going to play in the receiving game. He's going to play on the perimeter. Montgomery has to hold off free agent signee Mike Davis. But I have him RB29 in redraft leagues. Behind Cohen by a little bit, but well ahead of Davis. Next up, and in my estimation not all that far behind Montgomery, is Miles Sanders, who followed up Saquon Barkley at Penn State. Uh, started for just one year, got selected in the second round by the Eagles, and it's all sort of interconnected, isn't it? Because the Eagles also traded with the Bears for Jordan Howard. So Sanders is, is a more explosive athlete, well, than Montgomery for sure, and actually, if I'm honest, probably Jacobs too. I thought when he found creases in college, you know, he would be gone. That makes him an obvious countermeasure to Howard because Howard, we know, is sort of just going to run into the line of scrimmage. So Sanders is 5'11", 211 pounds. So not huge, but not small. He's got good lateral moves. Basically, you can see the potential that led Philly to grab him early. For an NFL back, yeah, his size is average, but I think his movements are better than average. The outstanding question for me is whether he'll be physical as a pro. I didn't see all that many times on tape where he really took on a tackler. It seemed to me he was usually trying to find a way around tacklers, and that's always going to work better in college than in the NFL. When tacklers get a hand on you, you know, you got to be able to get them off. You can't always escape. The Eagles' modus operandi lately has been platoons. We don't really know that because we don't really know what things would have looked like if J.H.I. hadn't torn his ACL in Week 5 last year. But we're probably wise to expect a timeshare. Sanders has the star upside. Howard is the rock-solid two-down guy. He can handle a lot of work if the kid isn't ready. I rank him real close. Sanders, 30 in standard. Howard, 32. Even if Howard starts the year with a bigger share, I would expect Sanders to work his way in as he gets acclimated. Fourth on my rookie running back list, but not by much, is the Rams' Daryl Henderson, late of the University of Memphis. Uh, what a fun player he was in college. Just really fast. His film is filled with defenders being surprised how quickly he's on them and by them. Everything Henderson does is a million miles an hour. His hair is on fire. He probably has the fastest few steps getting to the quarterback to get the handoff that maybe I've ever seen. He's just very eager. <laughs> he's not a patient runner. Now, I'm not sure Henderson does all that much evading. I don't see a lot of LaShawn McCoy. You, know, you don't get those super sudden directional changes. For that reason, in the Almanac, my comp for Henderson is Dalvin Cook, another back who has a lot of north-south zip. Uh, we love that quality, but maybe doesn't traumatize tacklers with moves. Henderson the Game King, as I like to call him. Not big, not super physical, not a weakling. He doesn't need to be limited to gadget plays. I think, obviously, the elephant in the room when it comes to Henderson is Todd Gurley and Todd Gurley's knee. I'm tending to believe the Rams are going to be smart with Gurley and manage him a little bit and, and hopefully get him through a full 16 games. And I think they'll do that by letting other running backs take 8 to 10 touches a game. Uh, Henderson has to beat out Malcolm Brown, which I think he can do, though we'll find out more in August. Of course, if Gurley's knee isn't right, if it causes him to miss significant time, well, that is really where Henderson could potentially explode as a rookie. So after those top four prospects, I think it's a pretty big drop-off. And if the leading fantasy rusher doesn't come from among Jacobs, Montgomery, Sanders, and Henderson, I think I'd be pretty surprised. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't know some other names and maybe even stock some guys on the back end of our benches. Let's start out by introducing a few of those names with Alexander Madison. So Madison was a third rounder, and the Vikings drafted him to be part of the solution toward replacing Latavius Murray, who left in free agency. And Madison's calling card at Boise State was reliability. He fumbled twice in 645 career collegiate touches. He was powerful. He was balanced and tough, all of which are nice qualities to have. All are also probably euphemisms for, uh, I'm not all that fast. But at 5'11", 221, Madison has some hammer to him. And you can see a world where he's able to slide in behind Dalvin Cook as part of Minnesota's effort to finally keep Cook healthy. You know, Murray benefited from Cook's continued health problems last year to be fantasy's RB32, which is maybe, I'd say, a non-terrible goal for Alexander Madison as a rookie. I think if you're in a league where benches go deep enough to consider handcuffing, 
to me right now, Madison looks like the handcuff, looks like the guy to grab if you're taking the plunge on Dalvin Cook. I'll put Darwin Thompson next on my list, though I'd 100% be lying if I said I'd really even heard of him before the Chiefs took him in the sixth round. He was a one-year star at Utah State. Before that, Thompson was redshirted at a community college in Oklahoma. Safe to say he has worked his way up from the bottom. It's a cool story to land with an offense that definitely knows how to use its running backs. Thompson's small. He's 5'8", 200 pounds, known in some quarters as Christian McCaffrey territory, so who knows? Uh, hard to say, you know, oh, cool, this guy immediately leaps into the equation and helps replace Kareem Hunt. Damian Williams is there. He was good in December. Carlos Hyde is there now. Uh, they've got Daryl Williams. I think probably the best that Thompson will be as a rookie, if he even makes the team, if he sees the field, is kind of an explosive change of pace. But as you can see, as we've been looking at these clips, at a mid-level level of college football, Thompson ate people's lunch. We shall see. Next, I have the Patriots' Damian Harris, third-round draft choice, Josh Jacobs' college teammate. Even though I like him less as a prospect than Jacobs, it's pretty easy to make a case I'm wrong. Jacobs could never really even get a foothold against Harris when they were both on the same team. Alabama's coaches liked the thump and liked the consistency that Harris brought. My comp for him is Peyton Barber. Tough as nails. Uh, really not even that big. Uh, Harris is 215 pounds, right about what Barber is too. Uh, doesn't really have the tools to evade a lot of tacklers, so he kind of just tries to run them all over. The quote-unquote problem at Alabama for running backs is that the Crimson Tide offensive line is so good, there's always so much room, every ball carrier looks like a star. I suspect Harris will look somewhat more limited in the NFL, but then again, Sony Michelle didn't exactly show tons of lateral quickness last year. Not sure if it was because of his knee. And then Michelle's knee problems may be chronic anyway. If, if Harris is able to earn part of the early down work for New England, that is at least immediately addable. Devin Singletary out of Florida Atlantic next on my list. Probably not helped by the fact that he lands in the Buffalo backfield mishmash. But he's an interesting case because... His college film is fun and is filled with all sorts of explosive looking plays, but people who judge prospects entirely by analytics hate him because he didn't run well at the combine and his quickness numbers in the combine looked pretty bad too. I'm not going to try to tell you that he's LaShawn McCoy, but you can watch these highlights and understand that no matter the level of competition, Singletary is not an 8th percentile quickness guy. Something happened. I don't know what happened. He's only 5'7", he's 203 pounds. I'm skeptical he's ever really a feature back. The comp I give him in the almanac is Dion Lewis. Good all-around player, but tough, and tough enough to surprise you with consistently stout interior running. I think 2019 is probably a season of learning for Singletary, but he's a pretty good prospect. There are other interesting rookie running backs. There's Jordan Scarlett for Carolina. Uh, the Cowboys have a couple of rookie running backs. You've got Rock Armstead in Jacksonville. When we're at that level, I think we're probably talking about, unless we're in Dynasty League, we're probably talking about mid-season ads if they wind up popping a little bit. But in Dynasty Leagues, they're certainly all draftable. I hope this kind of analysis helps you whether you're in redraft or in Dynasty. I hope you'll check out the 2019 Harris Football Player Profile Almanac that I shamelessly plugged throughout this video because it is the place where my opinions on all of these guys are available. It's a PDF. You can order it right now at harrisfootball.com. I think there's probably a link below. No to the hipster producers. Put a link below. Uh, go get that almanac. It's a PDF, like I said. It's very, very long. I worked very hard on it. I hope you'll check it out. And thank you so much for watching today. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. Write a comment. Tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on. And of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel. And then click that little bell above the subscribe button. And you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.